figuring things out and making it work for your family. It's called surviving, and it isn't a new concept. Now, doing that during the era called the Depression posed challenges that most of us will hopefully never see again. This is the story of the strength of an American family in the face of great adversity. If the cool shade of this grape arbor once provided a refuge from the heat of summer, then this family home nearby was a refuge from the cruel oppression of an era. The home dates back to the late 1800s, which was after the abolition of slavery, but before the civil rights movement. It was brought here to Greenfield Village in 1943 by Henry Ford from Ways Station, Georgia. Jim Johnson is the director of Greenfield Village. Who lives here? Amos and Grace Maddox, and their two kids, Carrie and Amos Jr. An example of classic folk architecture, this house tells the story of the Maddox family, an African-American family whose story is whispered through the walls, artifacts, and space of this home, a home and property which this family owned. Cardboard on the ceiling. So that, along with the newspaper on the walls, are just so typical of the poor people across the South and the West. The newspaper seals the walls, the cardboard seals the ceiling, and at the same time with the newspaper, you can make it decorative. So Amos and Grace Maddox were descended from? Their parents, Andrew and Charlotte, were landowners, and Charlotte's father, Amos Morell, was an enormous landowner acquiring hundreds and hundreds of acres after the Civil War. Okay, African-American family. Right, African-American family, uh, former slaves. As a matter of fact, uh, Amos would have been the first free generation, if you will. Although slavery was over, segregationist laws and the brutalities of prejudice persisted. As a result, most Southern black Americans, though no longer enslaved, lived in rural poverty. Are there lives typical for black people in the South during the 1930s, or, or have they carved out a protective space for themselves? Uh, somewhat, both is true. What's a little bit unusual is that they're landowners and they own their property. A lot of folks, that was not the case. Amos and Grace are not sharecroppers. They are not. They own their property and they're subsistence farming, which meant they're, they're growing for their own use. And the land around the area was not really that fertile, so they had a hard time getting enough you know, to feed themselves. They would have raised hogs, they would have done hunting and things like that. This photograph shows Grace along with Henry Ford, taken when he purchased the Georgia home and built the family a new one on an adjacent property. From what we understand, Grace was a very giving person, kind of locally known as, as the one that kind of took care of people. She shared food, she did a lot of canning. She was known to carry a hot lunch to her kids at school every day. Very dedicated sort of super mom, if you will. There's a lot of pain associated with this house. Is that part of the reason it's here? I would say so, and especially true today. Just to be able to, to bring forward those stories about that era in American history and what those folks went through to get even to that point in 1930. And you know, it's important to tell these stories and make people aware of it so we don't make the same mistakes again. Preservation of a painful past to educate and to ensure a future of true equality, freedom, and peace for all.